Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church and welcome to those that are joining us online. And we are glad to be here to sing about God's praises. And may we stand together and sing My Lighthouse.
nations crown we're falling down before the god who reigns as three in one come We are thankful that our God is with us and always there. We are thankful for his presence in our lives. We are thankful that we can have God be with us in, in a way we can communicate in prayer and in, in everyday life. That prayer doesn't have to be that time that we stop and close our eyes. Prayer can be that time that we whisper those things of our hearts and the things of our minds. So let us go to a time of prayer and be in union with God. Lord, we come asking that you do make us one with you, one with each other, and one with the world that your light will shine brighter than anything else, Lord. For we know that the light has come and the darkness shall not overcome it. And we claim that in your name. And we thank you, Lord, that your light is there to direct and to lead and to guide. We come, Lord, lifting up and praising you oh, all of our joy. And, and Lord, in our times of sorrow, please lift us up to let us know that there's joy even in those times, for you are there with us, never leaving us or forsaking us. And we come today, Lord, lifting up those that have illness and those have lost loved ones and those that are facing hardships that they never thought they would have to face but lord help them to realize that they are not alone that you are there that you are a friend who loves and cares you are a savior who redeems and you are our salvation we thank you lord and lord we thank you so much that you 
never leave us and that you want this relationship with us, that you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May we be one, Lord, one with you. Amen. Let's hear the word of the Lord this morning from the, chap from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the love of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, let your Holy Spirit be poured out on each one of us here <clears throat> and may your words come forth in a way that people's hearts will be touched and changed. In Jesus' name, amen. We've done this whole series on the church and what the church um, is doing. And this one is that the whole church of God has strength to carry burdens. And I think one of the ways that we have strength to carry burdens is because we know that Jesus is our friend. And as I said last week, there's the Emmaus saying is, be a friend, make a friend, bring a friend to Christ. And so this has been with me all week, and I've started thinking of all these songs. Um, the first one is, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. And so know that Jesus carries all of that. The next one was one that I started thinking of, and, and it, it's from the 60s. It was put out in 69 by the Hollies. He's not heavy, he's my brother. And um, as I went through to find some of that, the words, it showed a video of a Vietnam person, war, Vietnam veteran or a, a person in war in Vietnam carrying another soldier. And so it was, he's not heavy, he's my brother. And then I thought about James Taylor. Um, you've got a friend, just call out my name and no matter wherever I'll be, I'll be there. And so you've got a friend. And then it came to another thought was, um, my, my mind was going all the different directions, was it went to the, um, the girls in Florida and to, you've got a friend that, that is there and the Golden Girls and how that they had, thank you for being a friend. And then it went to Woody in Toy Story and you've got a friend in me. And all these different songs came just out everywhere about being a friend and how friends are important and Jesus being our friend to lift our burdens is essential for us to know. So today's thing is about bearing and sharing our burdens and in order to do that we need to be friends. Friends, not only with us here but friends out in the world. Bearing one another's burdens is fulfilling the law. 
It's a, it's a way of koinonia, is bearing one another's burdens. And koinonia is a Greek term that if it's translated into English, it says it's fellowship. It's a fellowship of sharing, sharing, and friendship, being partners with the gospel, fellowship with God. And because we belong to Christ, we belong to each other. We are not separate entities. We belong to one another. And with that, interrelatedness and interdependence. Um, if one member suffers, remember the scripture. If one member suffers, we all suffer. If one member has honor, we all rejoice. That's what it's about, is that we are coming together as a group, as a congregation, as a group of friends and a family. So I'm going to say that as we carry their burdens here, are some ways to look and to think about how we can do that. First of all, I think that we have to see that we, in our shared life, learn to listen. Learn to listen. Listening, I think, can be a, a, a missed art. One of the radio announcers this week was talking about how she had fallen short of this piece, but she said she, she, said she was talking to her husband and he was talking to her and she had her phone and she was scanning Facebook as he was talking to her. And he said, did you hear anything? I said, uh-huh. He said, repeat it. Oh, she couldn't. That we have to take time to listen to one another, truly listen. And when we listen, it says to somebody that we care about them, that they are important, that we value what they have. And when we listen, we shouldn't only just listen with our ears, but we need to listen with our hearts. And when we do that, the Spirit, the Spirit of God opens doors. The Spirit of God opens doors, and lives can be transformed, and hearts can be changed. When somebody feels that they have value and have importance, the whole attitude of life changes. And that can be the part of either belonging or not belonging, is that somebody listened to me. The next part that I think we need to hit is that we have to be available. To, to lift one another's burdens, we have to be available. And we have to be available in love. And the question maybe we should ask each other, have I been Christ to others? Well, in order to tell you what to be available is, let me tell you what not to be available is. Unavailable, here's what its definition. Unavailable people can't give themselves to others. They're preoccupied with their own world. They're encumbered with themselves. They judge others and are um, deciding whether somebody should fit into their little world, their microcosm. And the other thing that they do is that they guard themselves against involvement. That's people who are unavailable. But to be a true friend, to lift others' burdens, we are to be available. And I, I just want to warn us, though, that all of us, I think, hit some of those characteristics of being unavailable at some point in time. Whether it's because we don't want to be involved, whether it's because we fear we're going to be hurt, whether it's because we are, we're just afraid we've never done that before. So we kind of keep ourselves sheltered and in our own little world so we don't have to face what's going on in, in other things. But here's what it means to be available. The available are not encumbered with possessions. You know the story in the scriptures in the gospel where they invite everybody to the banquet and I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet, don't bother me now, I've married a wife, I have bought me a cow, I have fields and commitments, so there we go, I can't come. How many times have, have we maybe fallen into that trap to say, oh, I can't come. I have to wash the cat. Well, maybe not that, but you can't come. Okay, to be available then is that you don't set up restrictions for your relationships. You don't say, in order for you to be my friend, you have to fit this description. And only that way 
will you come in to be my friend? I have to tell you about a friend of mine that I have made uh, within the last 10 years. And she's a young woman who I never would have talked about or thought about as a friend until, until she was available to me. And with that, she was a young woman that at one point in time, my daughters were doing 4-H and we had to have a certain breed of rabbit and we couldn't find one any place and the deadline was coming. And so what do I do? I get on the internet and kind of put an SOS out. We need these rabbits immediately. The deadline is July the 1st. And this woman comes up and she says, I can help you. I'm, I'm four hours away, but I can help you if you want to come to my house. And I said, okay. So we're driving over the river and through the woods, literally, to get to get to her house and in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. And after we get there, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? I don't know who this person is. I don't know where we're going. It's me and, and Jeff is with me and the girls, we're all here in the car. Oh, what are we doing? And we pull into this little house that was well kept, but it was a little house that needed work. Um, that lawn was well kept, and thinking, why, what are we doing? Where are we? And out comes a young woman who has tattoos all over her arms and, and some on her legs and some on her chest and some on her back, and she has this wild eye makeup and these big earrings that are about as big as my head, and it was like, oh, my gosh, this is not my world. And I think, what am I going to do? And she opens her mouth, and she is the sweetest, loving, caring. I knew you needed rabbits. I knew you needed them available now. And she said, so, and because your kids are 4-H'ers, I'll cut you a deal on what, what you have to pay for them. And she was, has become one of the people that I rely on to hear from, to keep me centered, to give me hope, to give me promise. We've stayed in touch over the 10 years via Facebook and when we can see each other in person, but she's there to encourage. She's an encourager. And thank goodness, I, she was available to me, and I didn't let her appearance put it off. She didn't have to fit into that category. And you know what? I think those tattoos are really cool because her tattoos are all of her Holland Lop rabbits. All over. She has rabbits everywhere. Really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. And so I am so thankful that she was first available to me and to let me be available to her to understand the goodness. That's what it means to help with each other's burdens. And then to have the capacity to listen and to respond. How many times when we listen to somebody, we are already, instead of really listening, we're already preparing our answer that we're going to give. Uh -oh. But we need to listen and respond with our hearts, not so much our heads. Don't think it through. Don't overthink. Respond with your heart. Jesus is our example about being available. Remember, he was available to the woman with the flow of blood, even though she was labeled unclean, and he felt her just touch the hem of his garment, and he knew the power had gone out of him, and he said, who touched me? And it was not in condemnation, but it was in a way to say, you know, your faith has made you well. And then there's the woman at the well who comes, and she's had several husbands, and Jesus says, oh, I know all about you, but I can still give you living water that you'll never be thirsty again. And he reaches out to her where the rest of the society had just cast her out. And the other, another one that Jesus um, was available to was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, not only was he a short little man, and I, I have a kind of akin to that, um, but he was also a tax collector. And he stole money from the people that he got taxes from. And they knew it. And they didn't like him. But Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. And that changed who Zacchaeus was. 
all of those greetings, those were the availability that Jesus had for them changed who these people were. The principle of availability is that we have something to bring to a relationship and we bring ourselves, not just to give, but to receive. That we would be open and honest and be willing to listen and to share ourselves. Above all, we have to love the person and be available in love, the love that Christ has for us that we need to give to others. We need to learn to also affirm our strength. Number three is affirm our strength and affirm the strength in others. Realize you have been forgiven. And so since you have been forgiven, you need to forgive others. Forgive us our trespasses. It talks about that our trespasses are are those things of our slips. It's it's like a slippery road. Um, And so when we get there, forgive us our trespasses, that we learn to accept the forgiveness and the strength we have in being forgiven people and give that to others. And realize that God knows us and loves us in spite of who we are and makes us strong because we rely on his power, not our own. Our strength as Christians comes from our relationship to God and to the people of God. In the church, the strength comes from lives that are are bound by a common love, a common worship, and a common mission. The church is the community of persons with Christ as the center of their lives. We are to have that affirming understanding that Christ is the center of our lives. Even though we fall short, he's still there. We keep our vision there and we're trying. We're trying to go forward, to be perfect as Christ would want us to be. The fourth point in meeting a friend is that we offer spiritual support, guidance, and restoration. Restoration. Restore in the spirit of gentleness. That first part of the scripture, verse 1, talked about calling people into accountability. But do it with the spirit of gentleness, not one of condemnation. Because you know what? We all sin. We all fall short. Um, We all sometimes go on a, a dangerous path and go different directions. We're all vulnerable to make mistakes. So don't be overconfident that you've got everything put together. I've got all the answers right here. You know, as sure as the world that I think I have everything put together in my life and that I've done it, that's when I find out that I don't. And I find out the hard way. So we have to not be overconfident, but realize that our strength comes in the grace of God. Our strength comes from God's goodness. Our strength comes in the gift of forgiveness. And so when we are in that, that we should also know that um, this shared support and this shared understanding and the share praying together and spiritual work together It makes a difference in people's lives and we're restored, not by our own power, but by the power of God. God restores us. We become a new creation through Jesus Christ. Remember, he died on the cross that we might have life and have it abundantly, that he wants us to be this new creation. And he wants us to remember that our duty is not to condemn, but to restore people in love to restore people in love. And so here we are. This is our our strength. This is our importance that we as a community of faith, as we as individuals are here to be friends who support and love and are there to, to give hope and promise that we are to bear and to share each other's burdens as well as to celebrate their joys. We are here together. And we are called to go out into this hurting world and be the hands and feet of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we can make a difference. Make a difference. Be available. Be affirming. And offer your spiritual support that probably doesn't come from you, but comes from the gift of God. So be the church. 
be the church for its good, for it, God created it. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks that you have called us to be yours, that you love us and walk with us, um, that you're on this journey, that we don't walk alone, and that you've given us brothers and sisters that are there, that are there to support us as well and to, to cry with us and to pray for us when we can't do it on our own. And, Lord, you remind us that we can be those that share each other's burdens. Just help us to be available and to be willing to reach out in your name. Amen. Come set your own at rain in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. Like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come and aid us God set the church on fire and may we go with his love and his attitude that the world will be changed not by our power but by the power of Christ and the spirit that is there go in his name amen <laughs>